ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اشنابه اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك المخلصين والمخلصين اللهم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking him for all his blessings and acknowledging of his greatness, we initiate our class of Riyadh al-Salihin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to bless this sitting for us and make it a sitting that will bear fruit. At the outset of the, the class, before entering into the, our today's topic, I would like to highlight a few things. First of all, sometimes we find it difficult uh, to be engaged in long talks or this certain discussions. So, and also our focus span is the time that we can focus is short. And the best methodology, uh, especially when we're going through books like this, is for you to have the book with you. And I think I've, as you have noticed, my aim goal, my, my main goal and aim is to dissect for you, to take into part, to cut it into part and show you what you can extract, what you can understand from whatever it is in front of you in, on the book. Without having the external, there's other things that can be related to it. Yes, we verbally touch on it, but for you to have that book in front of you and be able to understand that verse of Allah or that hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because we intend through that hadith or through that verse for it to have impact, for it to change us, for it to direct us. Isn't it so? That's the main goal, yes? So it's not just to read or to hear, and that's it. Okay, so it is for us to understand. And that's why when the author made, he looked at the need. What does this person, a believer, needs? What is most essential to him? What grows him? raises him in terms of his iman. And know that your, your iman, your faith, you are the believer. The as substances that you consume, the Quran or the Hadith, they're like droplets of cure, of source of enhancement that embitters you that keeps you firm. So you always, having that main source in front of you and be able to understand that verse or that hadith as it should be understood and be able to extract from it that which bears for you benefit that is the intention, that is the goal. And that's why we're here. Okay? So, for you to overcome that aspect of being bored or, uh, you know, burdened a bit, uh, of my belief, I think when you have the book with you, when you self find yourself engaged with the, th the text that we're reading exactly, and you highlight, you write on it. And this book, 
Riyadh al-Salihin is one of the most printed book after the Quran in Sahih al-Bukhari. The most printed book is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a lot of blessing in it. So have it with you. And this will be as well for a source of you, for you to go back because, uh, you know, a state of being a believer and a strong believer is not a state you reach and you become the khalas. Now, things can change. So you go back to your read it, revise it, reaffirm what you know, and remind yourself. So, my advice is for those who are interested to get a book and and write, make notes, highlight, see things that you don't understand, ask. And inshallah through that you you will be uh, you'll gain something that will be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefits you. So hopefully from next week, those who are able to could get the book with them. And now today, moving on to our topic, is Babu Sabr, chapter of the third chapter, chapter of patience. So from these three things that we intend, to mention and to explain the concept of patience itself. Second, to reaffirm it in the heart of the believer. And the third, to remind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah reward the Shaykh, he has picked Verses that covers different area or different aspect of a sabr. So if you ask what is a sabr, a sabr itself is a habs, well mana. Sense of retaining, sense of holding, and it can be a condition of being. That's why that best could be explained by the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرُ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ He says, how amazing is the affair of the believer. Now when we talk about the believer, is, is higher... And he's the one who is truly convinced. And, and the faith in him or in her is strong. What amazing of his affairs, the prophet says, that all of his affairs is good. And it is nothing of the affair of the believer except all of it is good. So there's no moment that comes up on a believer, a believer, except it is good for him. In the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not stop with that statement of specifying it to be for a believer. Is everyone understanding me? Is everyone with me? Am I clear, Ya Yahya? My reference point. Fahim? Tayyip. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, how amazing is the affair of the believer. And now he came back again and said, that is not the condition. That condition could not be existent except for the believer. And it's not for anyone. No one could be on that state of being he all of his affairs, whether it is major or minor, being a state of good.
he says in asabatu sarra shakar fakana khairan la that when good befalls him he is thankful and that is good for him because the goodness mandates from you to be thankful if someone gives you something what do you say you say thank you yes this is the default state and that is good for him because that source of thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing gratitude will bear good fruit for him will raise him allah will increase him or her in that blessing وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءٌ صَبَرٌ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And when affliction, hardship befalls him, he becomes patient. And that is good for him. So now, we said, الصَّبْر هُوَ الْمَنْ وَالْحَبْسِ sense of provision, sense of holding. But as the hadith explains to us, it's a state of being. Now what leveled the believer to that state of his affairs being always in the best of state or good for him is his sense of understanding. sense of realizing that when good befalls he should be thankful sense of knowing the rights of things and that the same thing when he is tested he becomes patient what knowing that that is born yani sabr is born out of ilm knowledge, understanding. And that as well, it's not something that you just read at once and you're done. It's something you engrave in yourself slowly, like a droplet. You take slowly, slowly, until that becomes part of you. And we will come to explain to that what extent that will take you that real realization. So, a sabr is a state of being, condition. And now the sheikh, he starts and says, قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا صبروا وصابروا Now the first thing, the matter of a sabr, Matter of patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, He orders you to be patient. He orders you and I to be patient. يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَبِرُوا وَصَابِرُوا وَرَابِطُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ الصَّبْر For you to be patient. المصابرة is for you to be steadfast on sabr, to remain steadfast and firm on the patience. For example, you might be in a battlefield. You don't give up, you can remain patient on your state. Maybe your opponent is patient as well, but you don't exhaust your patience until you cannot survive. The same thing, you have something that tempts you. Or someone could call you to something. You can see how precise that person is in calling you. But you remain your patience. Because that person is patient in calling you. 
So as you, you are patient on staying on the foot. And this is in every part of your identity as a believer. You'll find those who would want to lead you astray. And they are patient in their mission. So as you become patient in your mission of holding onto your religion and being firm. And what are the areas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you in? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as the Sheikh has put down, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Now listen to me carefully. So now we still want to build the basis of patience where you can't just, uh, so don't think that is a, a vague idea that is uttered. It, you need to look for the patience. Where do you look for the patience? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with affirmity that we will test you with something of fear. You might be in a state of fear. You might be put in the state of fear. Okay? But you remain patient. Someone might threaten you, threaten you of your faith. Do you give up straight away? Do you remain patient? And this is the things will, that will happen. You'll be tested. Or the state of uh, hunger. You, might, you, you lose your wealth. Your livelihood. Everything. Does that... Yani does the state of the believer in that moment disbelieve in Allah? What is, what is required from him? To be patient. Because Allah has told you that he will test you. Or loss of life. Or other things of wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give guidance to the patient one. What is the highest state that you reach? وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ these are the area where the a sabr, true sabr brings to you. If you ask a sabr, لما أنت تصبر على البلاء? If you ask the patient one, why are you patient on your tests and trials and tribulations? He tells you, إن لله وإن إليه راجعون. أنت ترجو الله سبحانه وتعالى وأنت لله سبحانه وتعالى وإليه راجع Now the true realization of the believer he knows that he belongs to Allah and he will return to Allah with a fact there is no shadow of doubt on it طيب هل الجزع losing despairing or turning back on his faith benefit him كلا it will never benefit him so what he says he sees the العزة والرفعة في الصبر and that is what Allah سبحانه وتعالى is putting he sees being raised and nobility in the state of being 
patient. So that's why he remains and holds to patience. So this is the state of the patient one. Allah ordered it, and Allah informed us the error that we'll be tested in, which is everything of our life. And we come to discuss Surah Al-Ankabut, inshallah, in details, if Allah uh, wills. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is Allah rewarding this person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you do an act, there is number for it. A reward has number. But for the one who is patient, it doesn't have a scale, it doesn't have a number on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him, rewards him, without any scale without any weight. That's how, that is how high the reward is. Because that patient one is really the one who realizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is, has the trust in Allah The one who lives his life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the reward that Allah has promised you. In another verse as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَافَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ For the one who is patient, on someone who has oppressed him, or someone has done something to you, and you pardon that person, you didn't take revenge, you, you were patient. At the same time you pardoned. This is from the umur, from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered, and from the greatest of things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Two elements that Allah has mentioned, He says, seek assistance through patience and prayer. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the patient ones. One of the dearest thing to a person is al istiqama to be steadfast until your last moment. Because by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being steadfast and being firm on that path is the thing that will guarantee you, bi'idhnillah, to save you, to be saved from the hellfire. And to the key to that, to assist you, the patience and the, the prayer. Patient, holding yourself. Being firm. Holding yourself from temptation. Holding yourself on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And performing of the act of worship. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يَرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be patient from, with those who call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these two elements of Patience, and he, when we talk about patience, it's not a 
any simple thing. إذا أميتها ذات will aid you يعني استس يعني استعينوا استعينا استعانة على الاستقامة تستعينوا بالص بالصبر والصلاة على استقامة على دين الله سبحانه وتعالى. That you seek assistance through the patience and the prayer to be steadfast on the path of Allah, on your religion, to return to your identity. You want to see if you're holding to your religion? See yourself, weigh yourself according to your patience and your prayer. And obviously everything, يعني, the acts of worship that Allah has ordered comes falls under the act of a prayer. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test human beings? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ حَتَّى نَعْلَمَ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ مِنْكُمْ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says, we will test you until we know from you those who have strived and those who are also patient. So you are striving and you are patient. See, when you are patient, you need to strive to be patient. Okay? So that is the thing that is going to be looked at. So the fruit of your test is that of you to test you, to see who is striving, to show the striving one. Because we all know the same, yes? Yani we will not be distinguished through, except through testers. And this is the mean, and inshallah, we will go through to reaffirm the meta, we will go through Surah Al Ankabut, the Bidai of it, inshallah. بإذن الله تعالى right now إن شاء الله until the prayer is everyone with me ها ما روحت معي معي حتى ما عندك قهوة بكرس ما روحت ما إن شاء الله صاحي ها لا 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 تعال تعال أنا ما أمزح معك أنا ما قصد ذلك تعال معي وجهك يكفي طيب You see now the importance of the Quran and when we talk about the Quran and the Sunnah, the Hadith of the Prophet وسلم, it gives us this understanding, the right understanding. It formats our, our brain and mind and heart. It makes sense of ourself, our being and the things that we do. And as it takes us from the sense of being lost. You look at yourself. Look at when we look at ourselves. Let's say before you practice, what do you find yourself? You see yourself when you actually go back and, and look and ponder on those, those moments, you see yourself as though you were in a dark room navigating. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. Do people think that they say we believe, يعني, and that they will not be tested, يعني. This is addressed to me and you, no one else. To me and you, yes. So we can't say we are believers and expect expect to not be tested and have a a smooth ride to the Jannah without any test. طبعا الله سبحانه وتعالى he did not say you're gonna be tested and just left you like that but he gave you the medicine to be patient to be strong to be firm on it that if you know but يعني to dawi نفسك you treat yourself with that medicine that Allah سبحانه وتعالى sent and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has informed us why that is not possible because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ We have tested those before them. And who are the most tested person? The, the prophets. 
know, takes, takes out of you the, your true faith, your true iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why the, the beloved ones to Allah, the prophets, the chosen ones, they attested to the last moment. To be set for us and as, as the example as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could, and he, the wahi came to them, he could have gave them victory with anything, but they were tested. You see so many being tested. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a parent and show to us and the person will see and everyone will see the one who are truthful in their faith. Okay? And the ones who are liars. So the most thing that your are concerned of the state being of being mustaqiman al sirat you know we spoke about this in this conference covered the story of who yusuf alayhi salam yes you know what you see the most important thing that is highlighting everything from the beginning of the story the end of the story it is firmness He's believing in Allah. He's, his father communicating to him the favor that Allah has given him. He's being reminded that he will tell him soon when they put him in the well. He's being cho chosen to be, he wanted to be, so that his deen could be saved, to be in prison, then be tested. And going to the prison, calling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in every moment, what was his, his goal? What was his concern? Being on that path that Allah is pleased with and calling to it. So when a believer, whether you are tested or whether you are in na'im, your ni'mah, your main concern, your outmost concern is al-istiqama. Because you know that al-istiqama is the key to your paradise. It's the key to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that you is elevated in the eyes of yours is nothing if it does not a matter that keeps you firm on your, on your religion. What leads you to Allah, what leads you to stay firm on the deen, is what you cherish. That is, it does not have weight for you. If you really understand, if we really understand, we do not give weight to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, so this test will show between the truthful ones in their faith and those who are just mere uh, verb verbally saying that we believe but not in actual fact they're not believers. And Allah says, أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ سَيِّئَاتٍ يَسْبِقُونَ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ And don't think as well The path of istiqama is the path that the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't think yourself as well when you see those and the others, those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be able to punish them. Allah has made for them more time for it. He's given you time. Walaikum salam. He's given every human being time. Time will come for the good doers to be rewarded, and time will come for those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get that which they deserve. 
And that thinking of your or that person of the sinner that they will could surpass Allah and not be held accountable is the worst of, of judgment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes back and reminds me and you, he says, okay? He reminds the believer and says, Man kana yarju liqa Allah. Yani for the one who believes that he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anna hunaka yawm al-qiyamah. Yawm in yuhasabu fi. The day that he will be held accountable. The day that when he will be told, Iqra kitabaka kafani bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. That he will be given his book and he's going to read and you're going to see everything. And nothing will be left out. So Allah said, "Man kana yarju liqa Allah, fa inna ajar Allah ilat." Al mawaid, the time that Allah Subhanahu has put for yom al qiyama, it's not gonna come earlier. No, it's gonna be, it's gonna come with his appointed time. So what he says to you, "La tushakik fi dalik, wa la riba fi dalik." There is no doubt in the coming of a time. Eden Esper. Hold on to be patient. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled from, uh, with, by those who think that they will not be held accountable. And be from those. And if you know that you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're held to be accountable. They know that. Okay? Be reminded that the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and knows. He knows your state. He knows what you go through. He, he hears your dua. In kunta mushtaki and tashtaki ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're, you feel the pain of the, your state, the severity of the test. Taltaji ila Allah subhanahu subhanallah. And it's shukr. And if Allah gives you a blessing, tataladhadh indama tushaj tashkur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you thank for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you become, you enjoy that blessing. And when you are tested, you remain patient and you call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you realize how you are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You yearn for that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That realization that all your affairs is in the hands of Allah. And this takes away you from a tajabbur. You know, seeing yourself that you have become self-reliant. And so, when you're in that difficult situation, you call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't feel, why am I tested? Why is this happening? Allah is telling you, if you're a believer, you know about this, it will test you. And this is to tell you, and if, for example, if you were to come into an exam, end of the semester, and comes and someone tests you, and you tell it to the teacher, why are you testing me? Is that logical? No, it's not logical. Because you know about that you're going to be tested. You knew about that moment. So the same thing. As you come into this world, you will be tested. Tayyib, what is in a nutshell? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you. Listen carefully. وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ You see that striving, that maintenance of being patient and holding from the haram, staying to the court of, of Islam, and, and being proud of your religion. and of your identity, and of your obedience to Allah. Mm -hmm. 
that is only buried for what for yourself. You're not doing it for no one else. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى The one who you worship, the one who you're following his orders, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich and not need of, of the alameen, all the creation. So your effort, your sabr, don't think that you're doing it for no one else. Someone else, except you're doing it for yourself. Have them in from the things that will make a person firm on their patients. Okay? If there was a, a well in front of you and you were just on the verge of it, and you were staying firm on it, you see the well. Yes, you hold on to it. Because you know, the, you know that uh, if, you, if you're holding on to it, some, onto something, you know that you live in that is destruction for yourself, no one else. So the same thing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we have said previously, if he would have told you to just be patient without any reward, he could have told you. Because min khalqihi. You are from his creation, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises you. Allah said, Subhanallah, you become patient. You realize how you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that you got the anka. Hammal hal. That distress of your condition, it takes away from you. And so let's highlight a few things on the things that we need to be patient on. Okay? Patience is needed in your actions, verbal, and in, uh, you on, on, on your speech, and you're holding to the religion, doing the act of worship, is staying away from the haram. And you need to see what these, these acts, if you're holding yourself from haram, this you become impatient. You're holding yourself from that haram. You're holding your nafs from that desire. Whether it is act or speech. And when you're doing something that Allah has ordered you and it is time, you are paying patient. Patience on the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I give you a simple example. You finish your prayer. After prayer, there's a scar that is said. Okay? Part of being patient is when you finish your prayer, you, you say to yourself, I'm not going to move from this mo place until I finish that. This is the part of patient. Nafs, you want nafs to go to the, okay, get up and speak to someone, or, or quickly you need to do something, you know, you go. But you say you teach yourself patient. That there's this thing, this is the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has a benefit for me. As soon as I finish, I will be patient until I'm going to teach my nafs. Yani, you ta'awid nafsak. I have to read this one. You come in the morning. The morning is car. To with nafsak. You become patient. You make show. Okay, this is the morning time. I have to say my car. And I will complete it. You're reading of the Quran. You're learning. It is part of patience. And it's staying away from those who could have bad impact on you. That is part of patience. And us, 
we train we need to train ourselves slowly slowly and slowly you become better slowly and slowly and slowly sometimes you fall you get up sometimes you are asleep you are awakened as we said reminder you know you you're driving it's like someone driving straight on, on the highway sometimes you fall asleep and someone gives you as they say buri and someone gives you what do they call it the horn <laughs> they beep the horn okay uh, and you wake up okay you realize i'm a verge of falling okay i need to go back to the car this is your life this is initially your life the sense of being alert and ensuring that you are doing the most important aspect things of your life خلاص والله سبحان الله تعيشوا بطمأنينة you will live with tranquility because you know your purpose in life you are taking you are taking you, you are doing the course that you're supposed to do you lead in all your moments according that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you Inshallah, we will stop here and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to benefit us by that which we have heard. Anything that was right and correct that was said was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that was wrong was from myself. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give our brothers and sisters in Gaza and everywhere else amen, amen. patience and firmness. As you can see, is a test a great test for them they're losing everything amen but what thing they have is they have an iman and that is the everything al iman is everything they, they, people think that they lost their houses eh al kafir huwa yanzur anni qad faqada kulla shay'in bal inna al janna tantadhirhu the kafir thinks that he the believer lost everything he lost he destroyed but the believer but the believer the Jannah is waiting for him. The believer, the Jannah is waiting for him. So in the our sight, yes, they are being tested, but they are the highest. We not see feel pitiful for them. But when you realize and they see this young boy or the, the old woman says there's nothing. We don't have anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tara al-Imana him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us an nasr and qareebin. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.